In FeatureCam 2015, the use of stop models is now enabled through a checkbox, meaning stop models can be used in conjunction with other stock options. This means that stop models can be combined with part surface dimensions, the stock dimensions, solid models, and boundary curves to machine parts more efficiently. This particular example looks at how this new functionality can solve a roughing problem on an oil-filled drilling head. Here you can see I've got the component itself with five distinct areas that we wish to machine. If I go to the part view and just highlight the stock, you can see the condition of the stock is a pre-turned state. So what we want to do is we want to remove the material in between these different flutes. We're going to do this with the first operation, which is a Z-level roughing operation using a large 25mm end mill. If I look from the top view, I'm just going to do a 3D simulation, so I'm going to single step this. So there's my tool ready in position. I'm just going to increment the sim tool color. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to see a different color when I do my simulation, I'm going to use the saved simulation results and then show the first colour which will be red for all of the other operations. So here you can see the tool working its way down to each of those regions, each of those slots, area by area to remove the majority of the material. Now the key thing to note here from this top view, we can see that the majority of the material or central location of this component has been left and that's because this tool is just simply too large to machine inside. So what we want to do is we want to efficiently machine this region with a smaller tool. So there's the state of my part. I'm going to choose from my simulation menu. I'm going to use the results as starting point and this means that I can turn off this roughing operation. I don't need to re-simulate it from this point on. Let's stop the simulation, turn off the roughing and turn on the first operation. So this is using the uh, same toolpath type, a Z-level roughing operation, only this time it's using an end mill, an 8mm end mill, and just referencing the stop model. And the stop model has been previously established, you can see here under the stop models, and this tells me, or gives me, the stop condition after that first roughing operation. Now by using the, the stop model we're going to get quite efficient machining in terms of the Z-levels of the component itself. However, what we've got, uh, we've got still got material left on the outside of these flutes. Now when we do a stock model reference type operation, uh, this toolpath is going to be inefficiently machining further out into those regions. We don't really need to go this far out. We can restrict, or we would like to restrict, the tool to just work in these center areas. So although the Z-level uh, machining is quite efficient, um, the region in which we're machining is not. So you can see here quite clearly these red regions where this tool is extending all the way out to the extremities of the part. So we don't want to do that. So what we want to do is we want to uh, use a different operation. Now this is our previous functionality. You can see just referencing the stop model. And again, with previous versions of FeatureCam, the next option would be to use a curve to restrict the toolpath. So that's what the next operation does. So looking at this one, going to my Z-level, going to the Stock tab, this is using a curve for a boundary. Now if I go to the Curve options and look, you can see we're using a circle here. So this circle um, is just a, uh, a simple piece of geometry to try and restrict our boundary as a 2D uh, boundary projection. So I'm going to cancel those, and I'm just going to hide the feature, and then play this as a centerline simulation. So if we look from the top, we can see quite clearly we've restricted that quite nicely inside that circle region. However, if I rotate round, you can see that we've got machining in these regions here. Now, because this stock has been previously turned, we know there's no material there. So again, it's not the most efficient uh, idea to machine. So what we want really is a combination of those two. We want the uh, efficient uh, machining against the stock model itself, uh, which removes the uh, uh, only the necessary Z slices that are required. But likewise, we wish to clip that toolpath to some kind of geometry or some kind of curve uh, to restrict the area that we're machining inside. So that's what the final operation does. 
Uh, and then new functionality, if I go to the stock tab, you probably would have noticed on the previous example, but here you can see uh, the changes that we made to this form. So we have the radio buttons for part surface, for stock dimensions, for the solid model, and for the curve uh, for boundaries. However, stock models is now a checkbox, and this can, checkbox can be applied to any one of these functions. I can select my stop model, I can choose the operation and the stop model itself, and I've also got the same stop model options that we introduced in earlier versions of FeatureCam. So this is also using that same curve, it's using that same circle, uh, and this time we're referencing the roughing operation from the previous uh, stock state. So let's do a centerline simulation here. So now you can see there's a lot less machining going on in these top regions. We've just got a, a small amount uh, as we work our way down through the component. And what you see, we've got much more efficient machining uh, inside that central region. This can be verified with a 3D simulation. So I'm going to choose my 3D sim. And just show that you can see the tool making its way efficiently down those Z levels whilst being restricted by that circular boundary. So I'm just working its way to the base. Let me get the part machined like so. So this can also work in multi-axis uh, orientations, 3 plus 2, uh, and that's what that second setup highlights. So you can see we've got a second setup here. If I turn on the first one, this is using uh, the stop model. So again, if I go to the Z level, go to the stock, you can see this is referencing the stop model uh, and using the, uh, the, the default functionality. So the problem with this one, again, we'll get nice, efficient trimming around the component itself. Let's just turn off this one. Let's do single step so this is the region I'm trying to machine so we get the Z levels quite efficiently machined but it hasn't restricted to work inside this slot we want to restrict the toolpath to work inside this slot uh, but then trim efficiently to the stop model itself so you can see we've got a bit of machining here likewise once it works its way down to the bottom of this pocket it's also going to jump over and machine a bit of this side here as well so that's the stop model so it's trim nicely to the Z levels. Again we'd have a similar sort of situation if I go to my second operation, so this is using a stock curve. So we already have the, the, the curve here. If I look from the, uh, the top view from setup 2, I just highlight. So there's my curve to restrict to, but once again it's inefficient because it doesn't know the stock state. Um, it just sees this as a 2D clipped boundary uh, and basically gives me the bounding box uh, for the um, uh, for the toolpath calculation itself. And if we were to do a centerline simulation just to reveal this, you will see that we get the toolpath trimmed, but it's not trimmed nicely to the shape of this turned stock. So if we look from the top, you can see it's worked its way inside that curve, but again, hasn't machined efficiently based on the stock condition. So the final operation is again using a combination of the two. This time, as we said, in the 3 plus 2 orientation, this is using combination of that stock curve that you saw before and the stock state of the component itself. If you view this as a centerline simulation, you can see we get much more efficient machining. Likewise, it's clipped that nicely to the shape of the, the turn stock and also taking into account the removed material in these regions here as well. Final thing to do is just to turn on those last two operations just see this as a full 3D simulation. So I'm going to select my top setup, play the last two operations just to see my part being machined efficiently. So working our way down through the top of the component. So just getting to the base of this part. And then we'll index over and we'll machine at slot number one or flute number one. Efficiently as well.
Here's my component machined efficiently using the new stock model options.